Hi, my name is Kath Smith and I'm one of the directors of ASI Wise. And I'm here today to answer your questions about uh, different learning pathways that therapists might want to take to complete their certification in AS sensor integration, um, either uh, doing it directly with ASIYs and Classy or alternatively with Ulster University for the MSc in Advancing Practice. And our first question today. Could you explain the ASIYs Classy certification route? So the classy certification route is this pale blue route here that culminates in uh, the award of the classy certification in air sensory integration or classy CASI. Um, in order to undertake uh, this learning and training, you will be completing six modules, modules one through to module six. Module one, module three and module six are completed live and interactive on Zoom with opportunities to work with other therapists in groups to explore your current client group and the clinical setting that you're working in. Modules two, modules four and modules five are undertaken in your own time um, on the computer asynchronously uh, where you're going to be learning more of the theoretical uh, concepts of uh, assessment and intervention in preparation for those live modules that you'll be doing uh, via Zoom. Uh, along the module one to module six pathway, you'll be undertaking assignments in order to receive your certification and your assignments get submitted at the end of module six uh, in order to demonstrate the learning that you've undertaken across the modules. The assignment for module one includes an assignment focusing on the neuroscience of the sensory systems and includes a presentation to an audience, either clients or carers or parents, about the theory of sensory integration. So very practical and, and linked to your, uh, your role as a therapist uh, working with clients and how you're going to use this learning. Um, as part of being an OT, a physio, or a speech and language therapist. The assignment for module two, three, and four, the assessment modules, um, includes practicing the easy with first um, uh, children or adults who don't have sensory integration difficulties, and then uh, practicing the use of the easy and other assessment tools uh, as part of comprehensive assessment and air sensory integration with a, uh, a client on your caseload. This is a tutored supported process and you'll be bringing back your results and your data to live tutor sessions that are held in the evenings um, where you'll be exploring with your cohort and other peers the data that you've gathered and your interpretation. You'll have uh, support from expert uh, lecturers and tutors to do your interpretation, to check your interpretation. Um, so this really links clearly to your clinical practice with people on your current caseload. And it doesn't matter whether the clients in your caseloads are children or adults or older adults, we're able to adapt how we do assessment for any of those clinical groups and also for assessment in a range of clinical settings, whether that's um, in a clinic, in a school, um, in someone's home, in a residential home. Uh, on completion of modules two, three, and four, um, and uh, your, your feel, when you're feeling comfortable with assessment, you'll move towards doing the intervention modules, modules five and six, where again, you'll be uh, learning first the theory um, online, and then you'll be joining us in that live interactive session with uh, Dr. Suzanne smith Rowley, a world expert, who'll be taking you through your learning about the application of air sensory integration intervention um, uh, in clinical practice. You'll be exploring, first of all, using supplied case studies, how you plan intervention based on uh, clinical data from assessment. Uh, you'll be considering outcome measurement, um, and then you'll be applying that learning that you've done in groups with the supplied case studies to a client on your caseload. You'll be supported with that learning and you'll bring that learning back to the tutor sessions where you'll, you'll be presenting again to your peers um, the intervention that uh, you've, you've uh, put in place. You'll be measuring that uh, the outcomes and thinking about uh, how 
the intervention has impacted upon the client's participation in everyday life. Um, and you'll be thinking about the outcome tools that you'll be using to measure progress with your clients. Again, this is a tutored, supported process um, and you'll have the opportunity to see clients being uh, receiving intervention right across the lifespan and in a range of settings. During COVID, we had um, clinical intervention provided on a farm. We had intervention provided in a soft play space. We had intervention provided in clients' homes and even intervention provided uh, via, via mobile phone and Zoom. Although this isn't traditional air sensor integration, many of us don't work in settings where we can uh, do traditional sensor integration that meets fidelity um, uh, every single time we provide intervention. And so uh, part of the learning in module six is how you adapt uh, air sensor integration in its purest form to work in your clinical setting. And so you are learning the pure ASI that might be provided in a very traditional clinic setting, but then you're thinking about how you adapt and adjust it, um, staying as close to fidelity as you can, because that's where we have evidence and research to say air sensory integration works in practice. But then you'll be thinking about how do you deliver this and how do you how do you reflect on your practice to think how you offer your clients the best possible experience of intervention. On completion of modules one through module six, you will submit um, your both your case studies uh, and your presentation from um, presentations from module one uh, to Class C. And on receipt of um, <clears throat> your successful application, you'll receive your certification in AIRS sensory integration um, awarded by Class C. This certification um, is in line uh, with standards. Um, uh, that have been recommended by ICZ uh, for learning for therapists about air sensory integration. Once I've completed these six modules, can I call myself an advanced practitioner? So the term advanced practitioner is not a term uh, that ASI Wise uses. And the reason we don't use this term directly is because advanced practitioners suggest that someone has advanced practice skills, possibly in other areas of practice. So we consider and, and um, have pulled the award that we offer in line with recommendations, including from our professional body, the Royal College of OTs. So we would describe ourselves as an occupational therapist or physiotherapist or speech and language therapist with certification in sensory integration, our profession first, and then showing our advanced practice. This kind of makes sense when you think about it, because if, for instance, a newly qualified occupational therapist graduates and completes their learning about sensory integration within the first two years of qualifying, they would technically be able to call themselves uh, an, an advanced practitioner had they completed routes where, where that is the award that you would um, receive. However, that doesn't necessarily mean you have advanced skills for practice across the area you're practicing in. It would only be um, that you've got additional skills in air sensory integration. Um, by choosing to use the term certification in air sensory integration, uh, your uh, level of practice as an occupational therapist would stand before your certification in air sensory integration. So you might describe yourself as a specialist occupational therapist with um, certification in sensory integration or a highly specialist occupational therapist with certification in sensory integration or consultant physiotherapist with certification in air sensory integration. So for us, it makes sense that we use these terms, um, and that falls in line with um, terms now being adopted um, across the CLASI, CLASI program, which is now taught in 31 countries across the globe. What is the difference between the pale blue CLASI route and the dark blue Ulster University route? So for those people who are interested in um, uh, accrediting their learning on the classy pathway towards an MSc in advancing practice, we are working in partnership with Ulster University to deliver the option to um, uh, do additional assignments um, and to receive credits from Ulster University for those assignments towards uh, their MSc in advancing practice route. So module one um, would then have additional um, assignments that uh, would be added to the existing module one assignment, the presentations we talked about earlier, that would then allow someone to submit um, those assignments as part of their registration with Ulster University on SI1, 
the neuro program in order to receive 50 credits at, um, at master's level. Um, module two, three, and four are combined together. And so when you complete those um, modules in combination with, as part of completing SI2, you're able to submit your case study as well as an essay and some additional um, reflective practice to re towards receiving an additional 30 credits towards your master's in advancing practice. At this point, you would now have 30 plus 30 credits, which would allow you to receive the Ulster University PG Cert, which is awarded when you have 60 credits from Ulster University. And then you can move on and credit um, by registering for SI3. Um, you can receive credits for your learning um, as part of the M5 and the M6 route. Again, using your case study with additional assignments um, related to outcome measurement, that's going to earn you an additional 30 credits. At this point, you'll have 90 master's credits, which you'll be able to take forward as you register for um, the Ulster University kind of research route. Um, and do your two research uh, modules um, as part of your pathway towards the MSc in advancing practice. On successful completion of the two Ulster University research modules, each of which receives 15 credits as part of um, on, on successful completion, you'll be able to, a, a, to um, receive your UUPG dip. So with your 90 credits plus your additional 30 credits, uh, you will now have 120 credits towards your P PG dip with Ulster University. You can then apply to do complete your dissertation, um, <clears throat> which includes a very um, a project and a publication about your project. Um, and on successful um, completion and submission of your dissertation, you will then be eligible to receive the MSc in advancing practice with Ulster University. If I've done all my training in air sensor integration, including training in the SIT, how do I do the easy conversion? So the easy conversion allows therapists who've already learned the sensory integration and praxis test um, via the old SI23 um, or courses that ran before that SI23 uh, to uh, add to their existing learning and knowledge by completing module two, module three and module four. Um, uh, there is a special offer price for therapists doing that to reflect your prior investment in your learning about assessment in air sensory integration. And uh, a therapist completing this route will then um, have learned uh, about the easy on module two, uh, how to uh, about the individual tests on module three, how to administer those tests about scoring um, and thinking about the application in practice across the lifespan. And then on module four, really focusing on interpretation of data from the easy. We're anticipating that by the end of this year, 2021, we'll have the preliminary normative data for the easy, um, with therapists then being able to use the easy in practice in 2022. For therapists who've undertaken learning about assessment post the old SI23, so post 2018 with other providers, um, you will be able to uh, register to do your learning about uh, the easy, uh, with, because you previously won't have done um, administration of the sensory integration and praxis test. Um, and for that, again, we have a special offer price to reflect that prior learning and assessment of air sensory integration. So if anybody's interested in that route, um, please do get in touch with us with the email that you'll find in the comment bar below. Um, but the email is hello at asi-wise.org. Um, and then we'll send you details of how uh, you can register on the appropriate route. So I hope that answers all your questions today and we look forward to seeing you on our, um, our program in the near future.